Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Howdy there. Welcome again. It's Growing in Grace. I'm the Breeze, and it's the Cap. Mike Kapler with me, talking about the grace of God and the unconditional agape love of God. That's one of those Greek words that, you know, makes us sound like we're really, really smart and, you know, theological and all that st- <laughs> stuff. But really, <laughs> hey, man, it's so simple. It's just the unconditional love of God. <laughs> man, I don't want to be like that. What? You don't want to be unconditionally loving? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be one of those theologian Theolo- types. Theological types. Yeah, I know. I, You know, there's a place for them, and we probably learn some things from them. But as far as you and me, you know, my goodness, you know, we... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, would have trouble getting a degree anywhere, I think, in any of the schools out there because uh, in, any, in any of the theological schools, because I, I would raise so many questions to what they were teaching me. And, and I think some of them allow for that, but I don't think I'd be getting an A. And it's, it's not necessarily because <laughs> well, I don't know anything, but just I would disagree with a lot of stuff. I well, suppose. the first thing I would ask is... How did Jesus die on Friday and rise before the sun came up on Sunday and you still count three days and three nights? That's the first one I would ask. Here goes Cap on his (laughs) Good Wednesday uh, theory. I I just haven't heard an answer I'm satisfied with yet. Well, I don't think anyone's heard what you've said and are satisfied with it either. (laughs) Well, that's probably true. (laughs) Fortunately, my identity is not tied into other people responding to me. Ooh, there you go. Exactly that. That's right. But you know that is that's one of those things, and and that's one that's is this is that's perfect because you know for several years I heard you saying this on the radio many many years ago talking about three days and three nights and how it had to be Wednesday. Uh, that Jesus was crucified rather than f- everyone calling it Good Friday and so on and so forth. And then, and then people can discuss this and, and they can totally disagree with you, which they should. But anyway, <laughs> in the course of the discussion, people can have all kinds of, of thoughts and we can all remain friends. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things that we do on this program on Growing in Grace is we're just sitting here talking stuff out. And if you're out there listening and if you don't agree with us, that's that's cool. That's cool with us because uh, we're just talking things out. And, in fact, just this week, Cap, I got a, I got a note. I got to uh, pass this on to you, an email uh, from a couple. They list. They say they listen to their program to our program during lunch and then they'll talk about it. They say it's, you know, it's a perfect 14 minutes. It's, it fits their fits perfectly. They're scheduled to eat lunch together and then talk about it. And I love that because I don't necessarily want someone to just simply listen to what we have to say and, and go, Hmm, yeah, that's right. But talk about it, talk about it with other people. It's really just stuff for discussion. And if we get things right, Hey, we get things right. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. But that's all we're trying to do is just uh, provoke thought and uh, encourage people. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you know, I, I think there's uh, there, there's there's room for growth in all of us. There, there's a, a lot to learn and understand. And sometimes just having these conversations, like what you and I do, uh, I've learned some things. And and of course that that's from the Holy Spirit just revealing things to us, teaching us, you know, what truth is. And again, I've said this before. We we don't have a market on truth. Sometimes we might be we might be off. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I, I do know that there are some things that that God has has taught us and, and shown us, and we just like to share those. Uh, it's up to you what you want to do with them. Hopefully, they will bring some some freedom and, and some hope to you that that maybe uh, traditional religion has not. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Well, Cap, I remember uh, a few years ago I heard uh, Paul Anderson Wall share a story. I think he had gone down to uh, Bob George's church. Um, he he at realanswers.net, dot net. Bob George and uh, he had actually Bob George wrote a book called Growing in Grace, as well as one called Classic Christianity. 
and he's got a really great uh, great ministry. Well, anyway, um, I think this is years ago down in Texas. Uh, Paul Anderson Walsh from England had gone to visit, and uh, the lady, uh, someone asked him what he was going to talk about so that he could put it in the uh, in the bulletin or the whatever the literature was, <laughs> and and the title he says, "Don't let anybody should on you." S H O U L D and 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 she did a double take and I'm probably not relaying this story correctly but it's kind of like what did you just say no, I can't put that in the in the in the bulletin yeah no, don't let anybody should on you and uh, that's sort of what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> we we get saved by grace and there's nothing you have to do it's a free gift absolutely nothing that you could ever do but then once we rope you in once we get you in then it's a whole bunch of shoulds should 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 you should do this you should do that and it's a whole bunch of musts and uh, a lot of that freedom is taken away cab well you know i've i've been calling it grace butt ministries the grace butt yeah i saw you'd say that on facebook that was cool yeah <clears throat> that's b-u-t by the way for those of you new listeners out there. We don't want to confuse uh, it with B-U-T-T-E in Montana. <laughs> but. Well, you can, you know, people talk grace sometimes for a while. And then there's the, the but that comes in a little bit later. You know, you're saved by grace. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It's a free gift. And then there's the, the, the buts come later. But this, but that, but you should. And, and, and here's what else you should kind of what you were talking about there don't let anybody should on you what 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 do you think that means Joel i mean when, when somebody says we should what, what what comes to your mind well a lot you know a lot of times when i hear the word should it's kind of a rule it's kind of a a law it's kind of a you'd better do this or else i mean that's the, and that's the gist i get when i hear people saying this in the church it's kind of like a strict warning a, a you know kind of somebody's not just encouraging you to do some good things but somebody's saying you better do this or else so that's often what comes to my mind when i and especially with with the tone that people will say that and in the way that it's preached a lot when people use that word it's almost like hey man you better get your act together or else well and, and here's the thing i mean a lot of people will say all right uh, yeah, you're, you're saved by grace. It's not by works. Uh, freed from the law, some might even suggest that. But now that you are saved, now that you are a Christian, if you were sincere when you accepted Christ, when you called upon his name, if you, if, if you were sincere, then your lifestyle will somehow reflect godliness, holiness, righteousness, uh, in, instead of a, a lifestyle that is disobedient and filled with sin. How do you respond to that? Well, mm, I think they should go get a life. <laughs> no, just, no, that's, yes, and and I know which life you're talking about. Exactly, and, and because and that you know I think they are missing out on the fact that we've got a new life. I was recently communicating with somebody else uh, uh, on Facebook about uh, something about grace. And the freedom that that we have in in Christ, and then uh, this person wrote something about how, but it's all about living it out, and in 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 a sense, it's saying, but we should live it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace, fine. Yeah, yeah. Grace, fine. But but we should do this, and we should do that. And the, you know what that brings to mind is that 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 person, and I don't know necessarily what this person believes or doesn't believe, but what comes to mind is that. Well, the question that I would ask that person, do you see life in Christ as God is way up there and we're down here and he's got this list of expectations that he wants us to live by or else? Or do you see that we that our life is hidden with Christ, you know, is hidden in God with Christ and we have become partakers of the new nature, of, of the divine nature. And uh, rather than living from a bunch of shoulds and musts from this distant God, he's right there with us. He's right here with us, living the very life, living his very life in and through us. It, so it, it, to me, it, it shows a contrast, in, in the, and it shows the big difference between two different ways of looking at life in Christ. Again, a God who's way out there expecting us um, to live out a bunch of demands, 
or a God who's right here with us, living it out through in and through us. Okay. All right. So my question would be to those who would uh, offer the suggestion that somebody might not have been sincere when they called upon the name of Jesus Christ. My, my question is, sincere about what? Mm-hmm. I mean, what did, did you think that you were making some sort of a commitment to God at that time? Instead of coming to the understanding that he has made a commitment to you. Mm-hmm. Again, that's, that's just another one of those turnarounds that a lot of people don't quite get because that just isn't what they've been taught all these years. So what, what is the, what is the, the question is, what am I trying to be sincere about when I trust in Christ? You know, it, my commitment to him is usually what people have in mind. But all, all we're doing when we call upon the name of Jesus Christ for salvation is to believe that what he did in his completed work at the cross was sufficient to wipe away all of our sins and anything that would come between us and God ever again. He did everything that was necessary to make us right with God again, and there's nothing that you and I can do to ever change that through what we do, through works of the law or anything else. That's what we call upon Christ for, not to try to be sincere about making a commitment to him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's. I think that does show that big difference right there again, that a lot of people, we they say grace, 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 and it's it, we're saved by grace. But then they get this idea that coming to Christ, as you say, they get this idea that coming to Christ is a matter of I've got to make this commitment to God. I got to make this commitment to start living right. I got to make this commitment to start living by God's laws and rules and moral code and and so on and so forth. Totally missing the point. Like you say about God's commitment to us. You know, us getting saved, you know, us calling upon the name of the Lord like you said, isn't about us it isn't about us. <laughs> it's about what he has done for us indeed. It's about the commitment he has made to us and how he is faithful. Well, he was faithful to begin a a good work in us, like we talked about a little bit last week, and he's faithful to bring that work to completion. Our job, so to speak, or I I guess our commitment would be to trust (laughs) that he's going to do what he said. It's really that simple. Just rest and trust and believe that he's going to do what he said. And so if someone's going around putting a bunch of shoulds, and musts, I think there's a graceful way to do that, because I think the Apostle Paul did use the word should a few times. Uh, We should live together, love one another, and so on and so forth. But it was out of this relationship that we have with Christ. It was out of our new identity, living out of that, rather than us just trying to do this thing on our own, and grinning and bearing it, even if we don't want to do it, and trusting his, his life in us. All right, so next week, let's talk a little bit more about lifestyle, whether it be a really good godly lifestyle or a bad one that seems to be full of sin, and what's the difference between the two in relation to grace. We'll talk about that next week on our program, Growing in Grace. I hope you'll join us. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.